Good evening, Renewal You. Yeah. Hello, everyone on Instagram. So happy to have you guys here in person and online. We're going to have a great evening tonight. We're doing uh, Squad Up Part 2. Part 2. Part 2. Okay, but first, we're going to start with our joke because I know you guys love these. Yeah. 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 Okay, so here we go. This one's really good though. This one actually made Mr. Kim laugh, so maybe it's a good one. So here we go. A man is driving in the country and he sees a sign in the front of the house that says talking dog for sale. Chief. Uh. He stops to ask the um, ask the owner about the sign. And the owner points to the dog that's in the backyard. So he walks out there to meet the dog. And he asks the dog, do you really talk? Yep, the lab says back to him. The man is shocked. But he finally asks the dog, so what's your story? And the dog replies, well, I discovered that I could talk when I was pretty young. I wanted to help catch bad guys, so I told the government. In no time at all, they had me jetting from country to country, sitting in rooms with spies and world leaders because no one figured a dog would be eavesdropping. Wow. Then what? Well, I got married, had a mess of puppies, and now I'm just retired. This guy is amazed. He goes back to the owner and asks, how much do you want for this dog? Ten bucks, the owner says. Ten bucks? But this dog is amazing. Why are you selling him for so cheap? Because the dog's a liar. He never did any of that. <laughs> just, just laugh. Just laugh. Okay. <laughs> We're going to go on to worship with our amazing worship team. So give it up for our worship team. You guys remember who, what the squads are? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? It's been a whole week. It's been a whole week. Um, do I have to help you guys? Yeah. So their brain is full. All right. High school girls over here. In the whoop, whoop. High school girls. Yeah. High school boys over whoop, here. Whoop. High school boys. <laughs> Middle schoolers up front. Up front. Up front. All right, so we're going to go sort of fast. So now that we're broken up into our groups, I need y'all to make a line. Ladies, make a line coming this way. Guys, make a line coming this way. No. No running involved. One behind the right. other, Middle like schoolers. a line. Let the man come up to the front row. You're first. Middle school. Okay, in middle school. Okay. Right. You're gonna compete with them? All right. Simple game. We're gonna try and get it to go quick. All right, hurry up, hurry up. All right, so. First person in line over here, take the dice. First person in line over here, take the dice. First person in line over here, take the dice. 
All right, simple game. And we're going to actually give Miss Paula the board. All right. Whoever gets the highest roll what is this? wins that round. You mean the highest number the highest on the number. dice? On the dice. So you, okay. have, you have two dice. So you're going to add up your dice. So wait, 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 they just started school. Now they got to add here too? They got to add. Oh. <laughs> we're, we're doing a little mind, doing a little mind prep. All right, hang tight, hang tight. Here, here's, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna throw a rule in. Boys, yours has to be inside the black box here. Middle school, yours has to be in this box here. Ladies, over in this box. If one of your dice rolls out of the box, it does not count. All right, so if you roll two dice, one of the dice rolls out, then you don't get to count that number. You guys got it? You got it? You guys got it? One, no, no practice. This is dry fire. <laughs> you can scoot up, you don't have to be that far away. What? You in high school? And then you need to go over here? All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna do this until we, uh, everybody has gone once. So some of you may get to go twice, that is okay. We just want everybody to go at least once, all right? Just a little recap. Just a little recap. High school boys are currently in first place. Currently in first place. I, I high high school boys have seven points. High school girls have two. And middle, and middle school has three. All right. So now this is a game of chance, but if you do roll too hard and your dice falls out, that one does not count, all right? You guys ready? Wait, wait, did they hear that? Did you hear that? All right, let me, let me get your attention. I'm gonna do this one major rule one last time. Hey, this one major rule one, one last time. If you roll and your dice goes outside of your box, that dice does not count. If both of them goes out, your score is a zero, all right? So keep it in the box, no, threes, no crazy throws. You cannot set it down, you actually have to roll it. I know you, all right? You ready? Three, two, one, go. Roll. All right, oh, double six. Middle school got that one. All right, next person in line, next person in line. Yeah, I saw you flip it. And, and that's a leader, by the way. <laughs> all right, pick, pick it up. Okay, let's go. Yeah, we got we to gotta make this quicker. We're not going to spend all night here. Go. All right, they lost one. All right, we got six here. We have a six here. All right, you two, re-roll. All right. High school girls, re-roll. Re-roll. All right, two and a four. High school girls got it. You guys ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh! Right, we got a four, we got a six, and a two. High school boys. All right, who's next? You guys ready? Three, two, one, roll. All right, we got a ten. Ten high school boys. All right, next. All right, you guys ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh, yeah. We got a four, we got a seven, and a seven. seven we we got a re-roll middle school. Re-roll re middle, middle school. school, high school girls. Re-roll middle school, high school. All right, go. Go. Oh, oh they dropped one off. Boys win now, right? Their middle school wins that one. They got a re-roll because they got the same number and they were higher than you. All right. Next people in line, you guys ready? All right, go. Oh, middle school went all the way up. Nine over there, we got nine high school boys. Middle school got a zero. <laughs> all right, you guys ready, you guys ready? Three, two, one, go. High school girls. All right, has everyone gone? No, Michael has not gone. All right. 
Grace hasn't gone yet? All right, who has not gone yet? So, we have Grace. All right, well, you guys have already gone. All right, three, two, one, go. All right, we got a Ted over there. High school boys. All right, Grace. Is Grace the last one? All right, Grace, come on up. All right, you got to keep those inside the box, okay, so don't throw them crazy. All right, you guys ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh, I dropped one out. All right, we got a 10 over here. Six, seven, eight. All right, high school boys. All right, I believe everybody has gone, so we are good. All right, go ahead. Let's, uh, are we going to stay everybody in the front, or are we going to? All right. Everybody, we're going to keep everyone center. You all right there? You okay? All right, everybody in the center. Why do you keep on pushing? Why do you keep on touching? I'm sitting next to you, bro. You like touching things, man. Oh. Oh, All right, good job, guys. Let's see, what, what's our current tally? We got high school boys are at 12. 12. Middle school's at 5. High school girls is at 4. All right, you guys got... We're, we're, we're going to do some more activities. You're going to earn some more points. But uh, some of y'all need to step it up. Just yeah. All right. Of course, that one was totally chance. So. Yeah. Are you guys ready to start? All right. So we're going to I have a confession to make. I'm pretty hyped about this whole squad wars thing. I think that's pretty cool because competition's fun, right? Um, I love a little bit of drama, a little bit of good competition. Oh, no, no. That's the greatest of all time. He's from Fortnite. He's from Fortnite. He's from Fortnite. Jumping ahead. Yo, Space Jam guy. Oh, he's that guy. He's so cool. Okay, so a little bit of drama. He's on Fortnite. A little bit of competition. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
discussion questions, you know they start out pretty easy. So these are pretty fun. All right, here we go. Small group discussion. Number one, what's your favorite famous or fictional feud? And why? People who don't get along. So, all right, so that's the first one. Oh, the second, second one's going to be some juicy Second drama. one. Juicy Talk drama. about a pointless fight you've had with someone recently. Like guys pushing on each other during worship. No, the fight we got. All right, so you guys got it? Those, all right, those are your questions. Discuss amongst yourselves. So far, I like that one. I'll say it again. Everybody's in the So these middle schoolers are all wound up. And I think we gave them the access to a little bit too much sugar. You almost spread out your glasses. All right, let me, let me get everyone's attention up here. Oh, we got Michael going. All right, we'll let Michael go. All right, all right. Let me, let me get everyone's attention up here. All right, so the, I, I didn't hear any of the ladies, but my favorite over here, uh, the favorite fictional few, was Plankton and Mr. Krabs. Oh. That was like, that was, that was a good one. How, all right, what, what else do you guys have? You guys have a favorite? SpongeBob trying to get a SpongeBob trying to get a SpongeBob license? Oh, and yeah, the, yeah, the driver's license. All right, what about you guys? You guys have a favorite? Ford versus Chevy. All right, who gave the middle schoolers all the candy? Woo! I am the there. We're gonna make you guys run some laps. Run some of that off. I'll come back to y'all. Y'all need to calm down. All right, ladies. Batman and Joker. That's a good one. Man, that came from the ladies. You guys need to step it up over there. All right, anything else? The Kardashians, <laughs> in general. All right. 
No, I'm not even going to say that one out loud. We'll get everyone all found and wound up. <laughs> all right. Pointless feud. Who has a pointless feud? Oh, Michael, what you got? Hang on, guys. Michael's going to talk. Come on, man. Space Jam. Yeah. Hyper Eats that one, Matt. Space Jam. What's that? Two teams in Space Jam. Two teams in Space Jam. Okay, okay. All right, so who had a pointless fight that they had recently? A pointless fight. You guys are gummy bears or something like that. Right? <laughs> yes, ma'am. All right, hold on, hold on. You got two. All right, and next. So an argument whether a cloud looked like a bunny or a dog. It looked like a dog, and I haven't seen it yet. You didn't want what? Shoved your arm in the cake. That would do it. All right, what about y'all? Any pointless uh, arguments or fights? <laughs> no, we're going to keep them all private. All right, we can do well, that. Oh, you have one? Oh, what did I do now? I know, right? So, Mr. Kidd and I will get in a fight just simply because somebody said something in a certain tone of voice. I don't do that. He's never done that. <laughs> He's never done that. Okay, so now we're going to fight about that. <laughs> so it's easy to do that. It's easy to get into a fight when someone says something a certain way. All right. All right, so uh, we all love a good feud, but we don't love every feud. So... Uh, you know, yeah, we, we like, don't like the ones. We that, like feuds about chicken sandwiches and yeah. basketball. Football and basketball, those kinds of things. Celebrities. Yeah, the Kardashians. Those, those are real. The real feuds that reflect our. Or the, Ladies. You are front row. You gotta slow it down a little. Yeah, you're like right in my line of sight. <laughs> Alright, so. God bless you, lady. No, you're a lady. Alright, so, uh. We do hate feuds that impact our real life. So uh, I'll tell a, a story. Now, this is a little older, not recent, you know, because I am old. Uh, I have two, and I'll go over them real quick. One, it would be my junior year in high school. I was in honors chemistry, and our teacher was like super, super strict. We actually had three notebooks. One for tests and quizzes, one's for notes, and one for labs. And they had to be perfect. If you missed anything on a quiz, you had to go back and research the answer and then write on a new sheet the, the correct answer. And you had to keep that notebook the entire year. So he was like super strict. My middle sister was in the same class as me. Or, well, she's older than me. I'm the youngest, so my middle sister was in the same class as me. When we got to our final at the end of the year, we had to turn in all of our notebooks and it would actually give you extra points in the class. So you turn it in, I think you got like 20, 25 points or something like that, which was quite a lot. If you were a B, it would, it would give you an A. It would, it would jump you a whole grade. And she, during the year, hadn't updated her notebooks and we're supposed to do it as soon as you finish. You know, taking a quiz, you go back. You know, that was basically your homework, was to go do that. And she didn't do it for the whole year. And I had done it the whole time. Well, it comes the night before, in the final, we're supposed to turn in our books, and she wants to borrow my stuff. And I'm like, no. To copy. To copy. And I'm like, uh, no. I did all my work, you do yours. And she got mad and she went off to her room and a little while later my parents came in and they gave me a hard time about why won't you give her your notebook? And I was like, well, it's three of them and I've been working on mine all year long and she hasn't touched hers so it's not fair for me to give her all the work that I did. So it turned into a huge argument and my parents made me give her the notebooks. So 
that was a feud. I didn't talk to my sister for a long time, or it felt like a long time, because I was mad, because she didn't do the work, I did the work, but I had to give her my work for her to copy, and I, I was not happy about it. So that was one. And another one, we'll stop there. That's good. Okay. We'll stop there. All right, so um, I have one. It was um, when I turned 18. Of course, when you turn 18, you think you're an adult and you can do anything you want, right? So I was still living with my parents because I was going to start college, and I had a boyfriend, and so I decided that I wanted to go out with him one night, and my dad said no. And I said, well, I'm 18. I should be able to go out with him whenever I want to. And it really turned into this huge fight. And I ended up walking out of the house. And so I'm with my boyfriend. I've had this fight with my dad. And now I have to go home. And that was hard because then you kind of have to swallow your pride and understand that you overreacted and you were kind of a jerk. Me, I was kind of a jerk. Um, and you have to um, ask for forgiveness. So sometimes that's really, really hard in a relationship. So those kinds of feuds aren't so fun. Stephen Curry, LeBron James, those are fun. That one, not so much. So looking back on like Mr. Kent's fight with his sister, my fight with my dad, they seem like a little less of a big deal now than they did then when it happened. I'm still mad about it. He, yeah. But at the time, it kind of felt like this huge wall was built between us. And, and we had to kind of break down that wall so that we could repair our relationship. All right. So, need a couple volunteers, a few volunteers. We want one from each group. Okay. One from each group. Volunteer from each group. All right, first hand up there, guys. All right, Hunter. All right, this is slightly taking All right, here's what we want you to do. Which tells you? Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to. We're going to build a wall, and on that wall, we're going to put some things that might create that wall, right? So, build a wall. Oh, okay, yeah. we're going to build a wall. So let's go ahead and start, like, yep, you're going to build it right here. No, it's one wall. You guys got to work together. This does not have to be structurally sound, just build it. Oh, no, it does not have to be structurally sound. Just, just get it going. Here. Build the wall. Well, then don't knock it over. Then don't knock it over. Well, they were doing it. They had a base of everything. Yeah. Oh, Deb, Deb freaked out. She thought we were going to break gear. <laughs> Make it as wide as you want. Just let's get it going quick. Do we need more people? Now Paula's getting all nervous. All right. So while they're working on that, let me let me get everyone's attention. Let me get everyone's attention. 
All right, so there's a lot of reasons why a wall of resentment might get built in a relationship. Hey, you guys all right down there? Are you guys all right down there? Yo, can we get a leader jump over there and, uh, and help us out? What's that? All right, well, stay on it a little tighter. All right, so there's a lot of reasons why a wall of resentment might get built up in a relationship. Whether it's with a friend or a family member or someone you hardly know, relationships aren't always easy or happy. So we fight, compare, compete, and sometimes we even stop talking. So all these uh, individual bricks, like the example that they're doing here, eventually grow into a wall of separation in our relationships. When we don't deal with them, they can result in a relationship so broken that it seems impossible to put back together. So let's, uh, let's go over some reasons why a wall can get built up in a relationship. So this would be like, think, think about this, like you have a friend and all of a sudden you know, they get you mad and you stop talking to them. Uh, or you got a friend that talks too much and gets you in trouble. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Or someone that... You don't really know, but you get those people that when you first meet them, they just grate your nerves, and you're just like, Ugh. you know, you don't want to have anything to do with them. All right. So we're we have a couple of starter ones. Yeah, we have some starter ones, and then if you guys think of some, then we'll write them down and we'll put them on the wall as well. So like the first thing I know, like when I was talking about how Mr. Ken and I would fight because somebody said something in a different tone, because your feelings get hurt, right? So that can create some resentment there. We have hurt feelings. Talking about the Kardashians, I think that has a lot. Oh, I have a microphone. Sorry. I think that uh, with the Kardashians, it has a lot to do with jealousy. So jealousy can create lots of resentment in a relationship, any kind of relationship. And then for me and my dad, I know for sure. Uh, for a fact that it was because we we're both stubborn. We're both stubborn and we're not going to back down. Um, so that can create resentment as well. You understand that, right? He, he was an army drill sergeant, so. Yeah, my dad was an army drill sergeant, so, you know. Yeah. So um, I think the most common reason that people get in fights sometimes is because they have a misunderstanding. Like they're not really listening to each other. They might think they are, but they really aren't. So there's a misunderstanding and that can create a fight or resentment. Any kind of prejudice. Any kind of prejudice. Um, like you have some kind of, what was that? Strong hate towards someone. Strong hate for, towards someone because of something that they can't control. So that's prejudice. And of course, there's always the disagreements. Disagreements can create a lot of resentment in relationships. All right, so we want to hear from you guys. Things that can build a wall between you and other people. What you got? Someone being annoying. That's with two ends, right? Looks good. It looks good. <laughs> All right, Miss Lauren has one. Dishonesty. Dishonesty. Oh, wow. Wow. That's a good one. Yes, Eric. I'm sorry? Disrespect. Those are really good. 
Anything else? Well, cheating, would that be... I went ahead and wrote it down. You wrote it down? Okay. What else? What's that? Unfaithful. We'll put that on the cheating. It's okay if you can't think of anything else. How Honestly. about ego? Pride. Pride. Let's pride. do pride. pride. Let's do pride. Right. What else? Anything else? No. Gia. What's that? Un unthankful. Being unthankful, ungrateful. 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 Okay. Yeah. Is that the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. You do something for somebody, they don't say thank you, and you're like, I'm never doing anything for them again. That's a good one. What you got? Unfair. Someone's treating you unfairly. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, we did. What do we do for ego? Pride. Pride. We did pride. All right, I think this is really good. Woo! Uh -oh. Religion. Can you create a wall? Yeah. You so someone asks you uh, what church you go to, and as soon as you tell them, like, uh, they won't talk to you anymore. That's a good one. All right, so as you can see from our wall here, <laughs> oh, you misspelled it, okay. <laughs> there are so many reasons why a wall of resentment can be built in any relationship, whether it's friends, family, people at school, wherever, even in the church, um, or even someone you hardly even know, you can have a wall of resentment up. Uh, things, you know, it's not easy and it's not a happy situation to be in. We fight, we compare, we compete with each other and, you know, sometimes and sometimes we even stop talking or we walk away, right? So all of these individual bricks, eventually all of these individual bricks grow into this wall and create this separation in your relationships. We don't want to deal with them because it's hard and they can result in a relationship so, bro so broken that it almost seems impossible to build it back up. And so this is the problem for us today. And it was also a problem in the past for the people that followed Jesus. All right, so we're going to pick up where we left off last week uh, in the book of the Bible called Ephesians. So we're going to do a quick recap. So we have a couple new faces. Uh, so there were some faces that didn't make it last week. So we're going to do a recap. So Paul is the author of the Ephesians. He was one of the leaders of the early church. So remember? Oh, what twice. The church doesn't mean a building like what we're inside of right now. Or an event on Sunday, so that we don't go to church on Sunday. You know, we're not talking about a building or something to go to. It means God's family, a community of people trying to follow Jesus. So in the early days, here we go. In the early days of the church, before social media, I know it actually happened. The best way for word to get out was by letter. And in the letter we're going to look at today, Paul was writing to a church family in the city of Ephesus. That's All right. Helpful. Yeah, that is helpful. But before we kind of dive into that and start talking about um, the, um, the book of Ephesians, 
you, you just need to remember that basically there were two groups of people, two groups of people. There were the Jews and the Gentiles. And just so you know, by the way, Jesus was a Jew, okay? Um, the Jews were God's chosen people, the people who were used to tell God's story and that gave us the Old Testament of the Bible. The Gentiles is a word that simply means everyone else who wasn't a Jew. Um, if you weren't Jewish back then, you were a Gentile. So basically, we would all be Gentiles. So before the start of the church, the Jews and the Gentiles were not people that you find hanging out with each other. They were kind of like that whole Green Bay Packer, Chicago Bear thing going on. Uh, for generations and generations, they had huge issues and differences of opinions, and those differences of opinions basically divided them. So when Jesus arrived, it declared that everyone, Jew and Gentile, was invited into God's family. Some Jews and some Gentiles finally began to come together around the message of Jesus. But getting along wasn't easy. It wasn't easy because they all had this wall built up between them for generations and generations. And Paul knew that those walls of separation couldn't exist between the followers of Jesus if the church was going to survive. All right, so we're going to summarize Ephesians 2, 11 through 18. Aren't you happy we're not going to read it all word for word? Can I get a whoop, 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 whoop? All right, so there's a, there's a lot going on in, in these verses. So here's your summary. Paul's talking about two walls here. He's talking about... Those both jumped at the same time. The wall that separates the Jews and the Gentiles, and the wall that separates all of us from God. This wall wasn't built by disagreements or misunderstandings. The wall between us and God was built by us and our sin, our rebellion against God. So Paul says, through Jesus, both walls can be knocked down. All right, so we're going to do... And thinking about all of that we, that we just did, we're going to have small group discussion. And here are your questions. Do you feel like there is a wall between you and someone else right now? What is that wall made of? Is it resentment, misunderstanding, hurt feelings, jealousy, pride, any of the Anything things that we have on our wall here? Have you ever felt distant or disconnected from God? And what do you think caused it? So these are going to dive a little bit deeper now. So uh, go ahead and start discussing in your group. Yeah, I'm going to bug everybody real quick. Miss Karen, our leader that moved to Brazil and got married, she's online live right now. Everyone say hi, Miss Karen. We miss you. Love you. All right, back to your questions. Thank you. 
Let's go ahead and get everybody's attention back up here. Thank you. Back up here. Appreciate it. So we're talking about walls, of course. Um, now, to fully understand about these walls, we need to really talk, talk about the wall that exists between us and God. Okay? So we have Ephesians chapter 2, 1 through 10. Maybe. I don't know if we do, do we? Oh yeah, we divide, so we weren't going to read it all to you, but we actually divide it into three main segments. All right, so verses one through three focus on the fallen man in his hopeless condition, dead as a result of sin. So whether that's physical death or spiritual death, all right? Verses 4 to 6 focus on God and his mercy and grace in making a provision for man's salvation in Christ. And verses 7 through 10 focus on the purpose of salvation to the praise of the glory of his grace. Altogether, they spell out the essence of the gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs> There's no capital G. You're good to go. So. <laughs> no capital G. It's just a lower G. It's not a big G. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So I'm sure that you guys have seen these signs before. Jesus saves. Right? Sometimes um, you may see these posters at football games for some reason or graffitis on a wall in a city. It sounds... Just a little weird, but 
Just so that you know, the word saved means that Jesus rescued us from a life in eternity without God. Sin is what we need to be saved from. It's the thing that robs us of our connection to God. Sin is anything we do that goes against God's purpose. And because of sin, every single one of us is separated from God because of that. But Paul isn't writing this letter in Ephesians to convince everyone of that. Instead, he wants to talk about how Jesus has a plan to fix it. I think you should so, go to the next slide. <laughs> you think I should? I don't know. I think you should. I feel like you should. Maybe I should. I feel like maybe. Just do it. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't write down. Anything. It's okay. Jesus did fix it. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus made a way for us to no longer be separated from God. Jesus took the first step toward us. He pulled down the wall that separated us from God and made a way for us to be reconciled. All right, so I need a volunteer from the high school boys and a volunteer from the high school girls. Hunter, you're going to stand right here. Allie? Allie, you're going to stand right, right here. All right. So, and I think we're going on to the next slide. In this chapter, Paul talked a lot about reconciled, being reconciled. All right, girls, get to the point for being quiet. What? That's all right. No catch up the way you guys are going. All right, so what does it mean to be reconciled? Okay, guys. What does it mean to be reconciled? So first, Paul um, described the way that Jesus tore down the walls between the Jews and the Gentiles and between us and in God, Allie and Hunter, tear down our wall. Stay right there. 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 Hey, Deb, good thing you moved that uh, microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really incredible. It's really incredible that Jesus did this for us. But it's not the end of the story. He didn't just tear down the walls. Jesus didn't just destroy the wall. He created something new. A new way for us to be close to God and a new way for the Jews and the Gentiles to be united under the name of Jesus. So, Allie and Hunter, what I want you to do now, using our blocks, is to create a table and two chairs. What a chair! Okay. Yeah, here, here, let's do this. Hold up, hold up. Let me have you guys go up on the stage. Be careful going that way. And then you guys can build it on that side. <laughs> <laughs> so they they are going to start working on their table and two chairs. Okay? And we're as big as you about. want, however you want, just work together and get that done. But we're but going to talk. So we're going to talk about the table and chairs. So when I think about reconciliation, I think about tables. I know it sounds kind of weird. When Jesus tore down the wall of separation between us and, and God, it's kind of like he built a table and invited us all to take a seat. Walls help keep us separated, but tables... I don't know how to use this thing, so bear with me. I'm going to click buttons. I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, okay. Here we go. 
Walls help keep us separated, but tables let us see eye to eye. Everybody's on the same level. They help us to have conversations. Why do you think your parents want you to have dinner at the dinner table? So that you can sit down and you can talk. You get to share meals. Food. Food's always a good thing. Food. And you get and you get to invite others to come and join us. So that's why tables are so important. So although we're separated from God and from each other, God decided to make reconciliation possible for us. Through Jesus, we can have peace with God and with each other. But what does our reconciliation with God have to do with how we get along with other people? So because of Jesus, we are reconciled with God. Because of Jesus, we can reconcile with each other. We can do for others what God has done for us. In the early church, like we said before, there were Jews and there were Gentiles. Both groups, they had their own traditions surrounding how they followed God. And it was easy for them to get swept up in judging one another. Because when you think you're doing something right, then the other person is doing something wrong. You start judging them for what they're doing. So they got swept up in all of that, disagreeing with each other and being stubborn about their own perspectives. Paul knew that the walls of division would keep God's family from thriving, and guess what? The same thing happens today. The same exact thing happens today. So just like God called the Jews and Gentiles to reconcile and make peace with each other back then, God is still calling us to reconcile and make peace with each other today. Just like God took the first step towards us, we can take a first step towards others. Just like Jesus tore down the walls that divided us from God, we can begin to tear down the walls we built between each other. And just like Jesus built a new way for us to connect with God, we can work together to rebuild relationships that were damaged. And why do we do this? Why are we so concerned about this? Because we're God's family. We're family. And as God's family, we can do for others what God has done for us. That's our mission. That's our mission. Now let's take a moment to look at how awesome these guys have done. We've got, if you want to stand up a little bit, maybe we'll see Hunter if you want to stand up back there so they can see what y'all done. Those are actually pretty cool chairs. We've got some really nice chairs. A very cool table. Awesome job. Let's get... All right. Let's give them a round of applause, guys. Let's give them a big round of applause. Good job. Good job. Thanks, guys. Go ahead and have a seat. Go ahead and have a seat. Thank you, Allie. Thank you, Hunter. We appreciate that. So now, Mr. King, you want to finish your story about your sister? Yeah, so it, it actually, uh, I was mad for a long time about that. I bring it up every now and then <laughs> just to, to get things going. He brings it up a lot, actually. I told you I was still mad for you. No, I'm pretend. It's okay. Now, at first, actually, I was mad at her because she didn't do the work. I didn't think it was fair that I had to give her my notebooks. And that's where I was stuck for a long time that I was angry with her. You know, what, just do, why, why you had the whole school year, you didn't do the work. It took a long time until I finally realized, you know what? She struggled in that class. I loved chemistry. I actually, when I started college, I was going to be a chemical engineer. Uh, I was planning on working on nuclear stuff. Um, and 
tested and done all the stuff and just changed my mind at the last minute. So, you know, for a long time I was angry at her for that whole thing. And then I realized that she struggled in the class. She wasn't as good in the class. So for her, it was demoralizing having to work on that after she didn't do great on the tests and quizzes and labs and stuff like that. Whereas for me, I did a lot rather well in the class and it was easy for, for me. I still had to put work in. So from my perspective originally, it was she didn't put the work in. And it took a long time for me to realize that it wasn't, that she didn't put the work in, is that she was uh, depressed, uh, I don't know, really the, the right word to put into. No, it wasn't, wasn't lazy, she was just, hard on herself because she wasn't good at the class. You know, I'm a year below her and doing better in the class than she is. And we're in the, we were in the same class, like same time, not same class, different period. We were in the same period. So, uh, so it was tough. But then it transitioned, my, my anger sort of shifted to my parents. And I was mad at my parents. Why did you make me do that? She should have learned. From her mistake and so you know I, I've redirected what I was mad about with one person and put it on somebody else and it took a while before I finally realized I was doing that that I was mad at my parents over that issue so it was something that was eating me up for a while and I, I was just carrying it around with me so it was pretty real estate man <laughs> it was just there and it, it took a lot for me to realize that I had to just let that go, that it was not something that I you know, could just be mad about it the whole time, that it really wasn't that big of a deal. Right. So here I am, 18 years old, my dad and I got this big fight, and I left the house. And I have to come back now because I don't have any place else to go. So um, I remember walking in the house, and my dad is sitting in his chair. He's waiting for me. And the moment I walk in, he starts crying. Like, drill sergeant. He used to be a drill sergeant in the Army, and here he is crying. And as soon as he starts crying, I start crying. And in that moment, I finally realized what was going on. I thought I was an adult. My dad wasn't ready for me to be an adult. He wasn't ready for his little girl to grow up. So it was hard on him. It was hard on me. At that moment, I had to forgive him, and he had to forgive me. And it was amazing. It was great. Um, and from then on, you know, was it better understanding between us? Was it perfect? No, it was never perfect. But it was much better um, because we understood what was going on. We humbled ourselves. We gave forgiveness, and we moved on. We were able to talk about it. So that was, that was really a turning point for my relationship with my dad. Kind of like it was a huge transition piece from being a child to being an adult relationship with my dad. So it's not always easy to reconcile with someone we disagree with. Tearing down a wall can really be difficult. And building something new can be even more challenging. So. Yeah, so it's never, never, ever easy <laughs> to um, humble yourself, to ask for forgiveness, to give forgiveness. It's never easy. So experiences like this one are tangible, or like what we've gone through are tangible. The reminders for us, and maybe you too, maybe you've had issues, something similar with parents or friends or whatever. That Jesus did for us doesn't matter in eternity, it matters in our everyday lives. So, you know, Jesus gave his life for us for to handle eternity, but we also have to realize that it applies every day. It's not just when we die, it's right now. This is this is it matters right now. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we can be reconciled with God and others. 
Jesus modeled for us, and Paul teaches us that we can do for others what God has done for us. All right, so that was a lot. Um, we're going to try... Um, oh, I skipped something, didn't I? Sorry. Um, so this week, I want to challenge you to start tearing down a wall and building a table and chairs, just like we did up here. Maybe that wall you need to tear down you know what? Maybe it's between you and God. Jesus had already made a way for you to come to him, but maybe you need to do some work to remove some obstacles that you put back in place. Maybe the wall you need to tear down is between you and someone else, just like I had to tear down that wall with me and my dad. Just like Jesus made the first move of reconciliation, towards you and me, maybe there's someone in your life who needs you to make that first move. So this week, how do you think you're going to humble yourself? Ask for forgiveness? Maybe even give forgiveness? So Paul had to remind the early church how important it was for them to reconcile and come together. I'm sorry. Can I? Did I miss something? We're supposed to do the questions now. Who? You. So I'm jumping ahead. You. Oh, please. She actually changed it. You know, I just didn't I changed it up and he's all confused now. <laughs> I'm always confused. All right, small group. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Last set of small group discussion questions. All right, is there a wall between you and God that needs to be torn down, and what are you going to do about it? Mm. Mm. Is there a wall between you and someone else that needs to be torn down? What move can you make to make things right with them? All right, so first one, are, are you mad at God about anything? Think of it that way. Are you mad at God about anything? That's your wall. You're mad at him. All right? What are you going to do about it? You going to stay mad? Is that going to fix anything? All right? And the second question, between you and someone else, are you mad at somebody else? You can just go as simple as that. Are you mad at somebody else? Whether they did something to you or didn't do something. So what can you do to make things right? Those are your questions.
It's really enlightening for us to hear um, what's going on in your head, what's going on in your life. So thank you for that. All right, so Paula uh, had to remind the early church how important it was for them to reconcile and come together. And that message is still true for us today. 
The church is God's family. But if we want to act like God's family, we're going to need to tear down some walls. We have to build some tables and do the hard work of doing for others what God has done for us. And thanks to Jesus, we can. So spend this week thinking about really our, our small group discussion questions. You know, what can you do to make things right? You know, whether it's, it doesn't have to be a huge argument you're having with somebody or disagreement or something you're not getting along about. It could just be something small. And that's what I've told you, you know, a couple times before. You can't change everything overnight. It's just not going to happen. Pick something small. Work on that and fix it. And then pick something else. That's how we take our steps in the Christian walk. It's one small step. Make a small change. Find something that you need to work on in a relationship with somebody and take that step. Lord Jesus, we know nothing compares to your love. You gave everything for us. Help us make that small step to make things right with everyone in our life. Help us pick one relationship to take a step with. Help us get through the rest of the school week. I know uh, a lot of these youth are tired getting back onto a schedule. We you know you'll help us through. Take care of those who couldn't make it tonight. You know, uh, we have some that are quarantined that can't be out. And, uh, you know we'll see them quickly. We'll take care of them. Give them hope. Let them know what we can do. And we have a great week. And we pray. Amen. All right, so we have some announcements. Mr. Hunter. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the youth. Okay, oh, that was very engaging. So this Friday, uh, the 13th at 7 p.m., we here will be having night of worship. Yay! Go singing and all of that great worship stuff. And then immediately after, we have the leaders meeting up at IHOP after. So this is 18 plus 7, you may not be able to show up. Um, Oh, next gen. Okay, thank you. My apologies. Um, and me, and not immediately after that. Um, the next week, um, the twentieth, we will be having Fun Friday. Yay! Am I right, guys? That's fun. And uh, um, Fun Friday basically we have food and we have fun. Yeah. Sometimes we whack people with pool noodles. Sometimes we run around and have fun. And, Oh yeah, and on a Friday, you know, the last day of school before, you know, Monday. Isn't that fun, guys? Yeah. Okay, I would think that is it. Good night, you guys, and see you next time on Youth Announcements. All right, so everyone online, thank you much for hanging out with us. Uh, we actually do have a few youth that, that are quarantined until Friday, so and I did see them pop on, and we've seen some other people uh, like Miss Karen pop on. That was pretty cool. All right, so I believe there's some pizza and cake left. Please eat it. Y'all take care.